good evening all today also i will explain some of the questions related to motion in one dimension see the first question here two stones are thrown up simultaneously from the edge of a cliff 200 meters high with initial speeds of 15 meter per second and 30 meter per second taking g equal to 10 meter per second square the graph of relative position of the second stone with respect to the first has been shown then the equation of curved part is i'll if you just read the question once just refer the question and try to understand the information given in the question see here two stones were taken here and both the stones are projected from a 200 meters cliff with velocities 15 meter per second and 30 meter per second in such case the graph of relative position of second stone with respect to the first stone that means second stone position is taken x2 bar and first stone position is taken x1 bar that relative position x2 minus x1 you have to write an equation for this curved part first uh, i will explain here about the graph here see for example let me consider this is a cliff whose height is and of course 200 meters from this particular cliff two bodies were projected one with 15 other with 30 which will go to the more height which was projected with 30 meter per second only na so when it is projected with 15 meter per second it reaches the ground first and later on the second particle which was projected with 30 meter per second will again come to the ground now let me first write the equations for both of them both of them separately i will write the equations for position at different times so see here <clears throat> what is the general formula for position for the first particle right for the first particle x1 is equal to what is the general formula for Uh, distance distance traveled by the displacement traveled by the body that is ut plus half at square but when any particle is projected from top of the tower which formula i mentioned that is x1 equal to minus ut plus half gt square it is simply minus ut plus half gt square now what is the u value for the one body that is for the first one i take here minus 15 t plus half into g value is 10 only na that will be 5 t square okay and this is the equation for one particle's position for the second particle's position what we write the equation of course the same equation we can use minus ut plus half gt square and here u is 30 na so that Minus thirty t plus half j will be five into t square, where time is variable here. Okay. In these two cases, when both the particles, both the first and second particles, are in air only, when both are in air, so what we can write the equation. what we can write the relation for x2 minus x1 or x1 minus x2 anything so this will be minus 15t plus 5t square minus minus of minus it will be 30t minus 5t square the relative position between those two particles while they are moving while they are in air only both of them then the equation will be of course plus 5t square and minus 5t square will get cancel only you will have minus 15t plus 13t which is equal to 15t 
that means x1 minus x2 equal to 15 t the relative position between two particles is directly proportional to time so based on that the graph was also drawn here for x2 minus x1 it is al always directly proportional to time only na? so for some time till the first particle reaches the ground only it is there is only direct directly proportional relation between relative position and time but after this particular point that means after eight seconds what is happening here one particle reaches the ground but still other particle moves in the air only na? in that particular case i will just uh, show you here how x1 and x2 are related in this particular case so <clears throat> here when x1 reaches the earth now what is the formula for our value of x1 it is nothing but 200 only na? already traveled total displacement of 200 meters and x2 is again the same thing what is that minus 30 it is still it is in air only plus 5t square then what is the relation here between x1 minus x2 what is x1 minus x2 the now here x1 bar minus x2 bar you can write then it will be 200 plus 30t minus 5t square so this is the equation for curved part for that particular curved part the relation between relative position and time is nothing but 200 plus 30t minus 5t square see here the question when both the particles are projected from same point at same time in upward direction from the 200 meters of height what will happen both of them will reach to certain height and again they come down while both are in air when both are traveled then you can just take the equation for separation between them at any time is nothing but 15 t we got that means the separation is directly proportional to time so that you can indicate the graph with a straight line. But when one particle reaches the ground and still the second particle is moving under acceleration, moving under gravity, acceleration due to gravity, then what will happen? In that particular case, it will follow the equation like this. This, is the, this indicates the curved part in the given graph only. Okay. Now, see the second question. <clears throat> a balloonist releases a ballast bag from a balloon rising at 40 meter per second at a time when the balloon is 100 meters above the ground then the bag reaches the ground in on the same topic another question was here see here here also a balloon is rising at 40 meter per second in upward direction when it is exactly at 100 meters above the ground then the ballast bag rele was released from the balloon that means it is also it also can be taken as which was projected with a velocity 40 meter per second from 100 meters of height if any particle is projected from top of the tower which equation i mentioned h is equal to minus ut plus half gt square the same relation h is height of the tower that is 100 minus what is the initial velocity given in upward direction 40 minus 40 t plus 5 t square and finally uh, they are asking that it reaches in some time only they are asking so just you can solve this equation to get the time so by dividing the whole equation with 5 we can write 20 equal to minus 8 t plus t square and finally it is t square minus 8 t minus 20 equal to 0 okay this can be this equation can be written as t minus 10 into t plus 2 equal to 0 okay now t will be either 10 seconds or minus 2 seconds but time will never have negative value no? 
so that simply we can write t is equal to 10 seconds after 10 seconds that bag reaches the ground very much simple question it is and question number three <clears throat> If acceleration A equal to minus 2t for a particle moving in a straight line, starting with an initial velocity 4 meter per second from the origin, it was given that how acceleration varies. You can just observe here, acceleration is not constant here. Acceleration is variable. That means what type of motion it is? Random motion. In random motion, initial velocity is given 4 meter per second. Where does it start from? from origin then distance traveled by it in two seconds is same as displacement distance displacement both are same in the sense the particle always travels along straight path it's the same path only it is not uh, turning back find the time after which it reverses its direction so just since it is random motion just you can use either derivative method or integration method. What is acceleration given? A is given simply minus 2t. And uh, acceleration can be taken as dv by dt only, which is equal to minus 2t. And you can write it as dv equal to minus 2t dt. Okay. And by taking integration on both sides. And you see here, what are the integrations limit for uh, integration limits for velocity? Initial velocity is four. Final velocity, let me consider it is v something. Okay. The, and uh, here initial velocity, initial time is zero and final time is t. By taking integration here, what is the integration for dv? V only. By substituting upper and lower limits, it will be v minus four equal to minus 2 into integration for t will be t square by 2. And of course, t and t will get cancelled here. 2 and 2 will get cancelled here. This will be minus t square. Okay. Then finally, v is equal to 4 minus t square. And the question here is, after which it reverses its direction, when does any particle reverses its direction whenever velocity becomes zero and still there is deceleration? And of course, initially it is given deceleration only. No? That means velocity continuously decreases and at one particular point velocity becomes zero and still if deceleration act, acts on that, what will happen to the body? The body reverses. So it, it reverses, it starts reversing only when velocity becomes zero. So, 0 equal to 4 minus t square and simply t square equal to 4 and t equal to 2 seconds. Only after 2 seconds, the particle reverses its direction. Next, <clears throat> see question number 4. A particle starts from rest at t equal to 0 and moves in a straight line with an acceleration as shown. Determine the velocity of the particle at t equal to 3 seconds. Okay. See here. Very much simple question based on the graph only. Na? Just based on the graph, a simple question was given. Try to solve it. Just only after three seconds, you have to calculate. So in this particular graph given, that means between acceleration and time, how can you get the velocity? Velocity is nothing but acceleration into time. Na? That means y component into x component, which indicates area under the graph. Simply y component into x component is area under the graph. So to know about the velocity, to know about the velocity, here you can just take the area under the graph. 
see here the area so here area of this particular part will be 2 into 3 this indicates a rectangle only na? 2 into 3 how much it will be 6 only it just indicates 6 and what about the remaining part only up to 3 seconds they are asking na? up to 3 seconds in the sense from 2 to 3 you see here 1 into minus 3 how much it will be then it will be simply minus 3 and finally what is the velocity and finally what is the velocity after 3 seconds you can write the velocity is only 3 meter per second it is simply 3 meter per second Okay, see the last question. <clears throat> the particle located at x equal to 0 at time t equal to 0 starts moving along the positive x direction with a velocity v that varies as v equal to alpha root x. The displacement of particle varies with time as t power n. This is t power n. Find the value of n. So, the equation given is velocity equal to alpha root x. What is given here? Velocity equal to alpha root x. And they're asking us how x depends on time. So then just for velocity, what we can write? Velocity is nothing but dx by dt, which is equal to alpha root x. And dx by root x can be taken as here alpha into dt for any random motion we use the similar type of uh, derivation only na? by taking integration on both sides of course from 0 to x it is from 0 to t then you will get <clears throat> what is the integration for 1 by root x 1 by root x means x power minus half for x power minus half integration will be x power minus half plus 1 by minus half plus 1. That will be simply 2 root x, which is equal to alpha t. And x in terms of t, you have to get here now only. No? That means root x is equal to alpha t by 2. And finally, x value you have to write x equal to alpha square t square by 4, where x is directly proportional to t square. And it, it was given that x is proportional to t power n. So in place of n, we can write here 2. Okay, these are some of the questions based on motion in one dimension. Thank you.